let's go ahead and uh, take a quick poll of the audience here. Poll question number one. Do you currently have SharePoint Online or an on-premise hybrid solution deployed? The answers are yes, no, or I don't know. We're going to open up the poll now. So as you join, please go ahead and uh, enter the appropriate answer for your organization. All right. So the results are 53% uh, yes. They, they currently have something deployed on, on uh, SharePoint Online hybrid solution. 35% no, and 11% I don't know. So the good news is, uh, for all of you, we have a uh, very fantastic and engaging session for you today. Um, so let's go ahead and take care of some housekeeping before we get to the introductions. So as you know, we're on currently on webinar four of six in the Productivity 365 series. We've had some fantastic sessions on business collaboration, search, and records management. If you've missed any of the previous sessions, you can browse to www.knowledgelake.com, click on the Productivity 365 banner, and watch the previously recorded webinars. The recording for this session will be posted in about 24 to 48 hours after this, after we wrap up today. For those of you joining us for the first time, note this is an interactive webinar, we'll, and as you've seen, we'll be posting poll questions throughout. Um, also, at the end of the uh, end of the session, we'll have some time to address specific questions, so please, uh, throughout the session, uh, submit your, your specific queries through the questions portion of the GoToWebinar panel. So introductions. Um, <clears throat> so, so far you've heard my voice. I'm Derek Watson. I'm part of the Enterprise Solutions team here at Knowledge Lake. You may remember me from session two when we uh, talked about search and findability. Uh, and today I'm going to be acting as host and facilitator. Joining me today, we have Steve Curran, one of Knowledge Lake's distinguished engineers. Steve, can you tell the audience a little bit about yourself? Hi, I'm Steve Curran. Uh, I'm a distinguished engineer at Knowledge Lake. I've been working for Knowledge Lake since 2004. Most of my time has been spent developing our imaging product. I've been working with SharePoint for 12 years. I've also been a Microsoft SharePoint MVP for the last seven years. You can follow me. Uh, my Twitter tag is SPSteve. And uh, I've got a blog you can check out. It's called SharePoint Field Notes. Awesome. Well, thanks, Steve. I'm going to turn over to you and uh, let you take it from here. So we're going to be talking about uh, hybrid, on-prem, and in the cloud for SharePoint. So there's a lot of things you need to think about when it comes to SharePoint. And within the last couple of years, the messaging from Microsoft has been confusing at least. Maybe you've invested many hours and dollars into SharePoint on-premises, and now you hear from Microsoft you need to be move into Office 365. You wonder if Microsoft's going to keep investing into SharePoint on-premises. You wonder if you're missing on new features offered in Office 365. But then Microsoft introduces hybrid features to enable you to use both. So what is hybrid? Online, on-premise, or, or both? Which one should you choose? It all can be pretty confusing. In this presentation, I'm going to try to make it clear to you what each option offers, what you need to consider when deciding which of these options you may want to, want to use. So let's start out with the, the good and the bad of SharePoint on-prem or on-premises. Um, typically, SharePoint on-premises is hosted on your servers and you have full control, but also full responsibility for the performance, the security, and the troubleshooting. Full control can be good, but it also can be bad. It's good because you don't have to wait to fix problems. You can add more servers to your farm and apply service packs on your own schedule. But of course, full control comes with a lot of overhead and risk. The overhead comes from having to maintain your own servers, which includes IT resources, server depreciation, and fixed software costs. There also can be a false sense of security with on-premises. If your IT resources do not follow best practices, then company data could be at risk of data loss and unnecessary litigation costs. So finally, it's difficult for your users uh, on-prem to access and share documents from anywhere on any device. So let's talk about SharePoint Online. The good. Uh, and you have the bad in there. 
So online, of course, is SharePoint hosted in the cloud under the product name of Office 365. This can have many advantages. You don't need a lot of IT resources to maintain servers and software since this is all hosted. You still may need someone familiar with Office 365 as the point person. It's very easy for your users to access and share their documents from anywhere. However, you have no control, which once again can be good and bad. The good is that all the servers are maintained by Microsoft and have the latest patches applied to them. There are no fixed hardware and software costs and there's no depreciation. The monthly user licensing cost is variable and can be expense. So you just need to add or remove licenses as your needs change. The bad, of course, is that you have to wait if there's a problem. Typically, if you're having issues with certain features in SharePoint, you could troubleshoot it fairly fast if you have access to your own servers. However, with SharePoint Online, you'll have to make a service call and file a support ticket, which possibly could take days. Microsoft Online SLAs cover uptime for SharePoint as a whole, but not necessarily with certain features, for example, search. However, Office 365 offers much better health monitoring with a great dashboard and also has a great maintenance notification system. So what about security? Well, depending on how qualified your IT resources are and uh, are, have access, security could be better with SharePoint Online. Microsoft has made security the number one priority with Office 365, especially with the new data loss protection and compliance center features. However, you still may not want to host your key company data online, especially if it's hosted on the same server as other companies. If hosting your data on the same server as others bothers you, you can opt for a SharePoint Online dedicated subscription plan, but uh, this can be pretty well cost prohibitive. So let's talk about SharePoint Hybrid. Uh, Microsoft's introduced hybrid features for SharePoint on-prem uh, premises to help you have the best of both worlds. So if you have key documents that you do not want to put in the cloud, but want all your users to have access to their documents from anywhere, this might be an attractive option. The hybrid features that are offered are mostly centered around collaboration, giving users the ability to work and share with uh, share their documents. All right, so let's uh, take a quick break and uh, for another poll. So we'd like to know what is your biggest barrier to entry for utilizing SharePoint Online. <clears throat> so the first resource is you don't have the appropriate staff, or you don't have enough time uh, to get uh, either a hybrid or online solution implemented. Second thing being a fear, uh, uncertainty, doubt, um, you know, anxiety. Uh, the third one being licensing or cost issues. And then the fourthly, no driver for change. Your current uh, implementation is solid. You don't, you don't see any reason to leverage some of the new features for Office 365. So let's go ahead and open up the poll. All right, so the results of the poll, um, so right up until the end, the, the, the first and the last answers were tied at about 33%. Uh, resources, resource constraints and, and concerns, and then also no driver for change. Uh, and to be honest, the no driver for change one is interesting. I know we have a lot of, uh, we have some customers that, uh, that don't really see the necessary necessity to, to, to switch something if it isn't broken, and, and I get that. Um, the, the third one is the uh, fear, uncertainty, doubt, which I totally understand, and then the fourth one being the licensing and cost issues. So thank you, everybody, for voting, and uh, we'll keep going here. Back to you, Steve. So let's continue with uh, hybrid. So what does SharePoint hybrid look like? A lot of times we don't know what the features are when Microsoft tells us about hybrid. So the first one is OneDrive. OneDrive for business. Users can store and share their documents in Office 365, and then they can have links to them from SharePoint on-premises. Another one is followed sites. Users uh, follow sites and they get their followed sites list in Office 365. And then they can access that followed site list from SharePoint on-prem through a redirection. 
So let's see, the next one be follow documents. Now, a lot of users follow documents and we would expect this to be showing up somewhere in a hybrid. Unfortunately, it doesn't. It's not Surface in Office 365. But with hybrid search, there is a hybrid search scenario where you can surface these follow documents to users. Another one is search, and this seems to be a pretty popular option for a lot of people in hybrid. With search, you can index and search both Office 365 and on-premises documents using either a cloud search service application or a hybrid federated search. Using the cloud search service, yeah, you can crawl both Office 365 and on-premises documents and consolidate them into one index in the cloud. Then users would search from Office 365 and then get unified results back that are ranked and sorted. Now, if you decide to go with the, using the federated search, uh, then Office 365 and on-premises are maintained in their own index and users search and are presented two groups of results, one from each platform, and the refiners and rankings are separate. So there's two options here. So you want, if you want your documents to be ranked uh, together, you probably want to go with the cloud search service application. The last one here is, in order to use all these hybrid pieces, you need to have user profiles in both, both in Office 365 and on-prem. And you're going to have to maintain those between there and sync them up. And when the user goes to edit his, his user profile, he's going to be redirected from on-prem back to Office 365. So I hope that kind of clears up some of the confusion on what type of features you get for SharePoint Hybrid. So which is the optimal solution? It can be pretty confusing. So when we look at our, our features here that are coming up, we're gonna, it's going to be dependent on a lot of factors. So we're going to show you some of the key factors you need to look at when you're trying to make a decision on which option you want to follow. So you can see there's a lot of features here to consider. So let's, let's start out with what kind of documents does your business use. If your business uses primarily Office documents like Microsoft Word and Excel, then either a hybrid or online solution is best. These gives, uh, give your users access to these types of documents from anywhere on any device. You also get the benefit of running Office in the cloud and not having to have these apps installed on the user's desktop. Office 365 also gives the maximum ability to collaborate on these types of documents. Now, if your business uses other types of documents like PDF, TIFFs, text, or even CAD drawings, you may be best served using on-premises. Office 365 does not have the ability to view these documents reliably. For instance, in Office 365, you can open and view a PDF in a browser, but it has problems sometimes rendering embedded images. Other documents would have to be downloaded locally and open to be viewed. This is better served from a local on-premise SharePoint rather than downloading them all the way from a remote Office 365 data center. Another thing you need to consider is document volume. How many documents are acquiring on a daily basis? If your business does not acquire a high volume of documents on a daily basis, then a cloud or a hybrid solution is suitable. However, if your company is doing production document processing, like with an accounts payable solution, where you have hundreds of vendors sending you invoices and you need to scan these in, then an on-premise solution might be better. Uploading documents to Office 365 is slower than local on-premises SharePoint, and this can uh, affect how fast you process your documents. Another one to think about is your line of business integrations and how many custom line of business integrations you have. So does your business need to integrate your documents with your line of business apps? Well, it would be easier to write a custom line of business integration with your documents with an on-premise SharePoint. You're limited how much or how well you can integrate your documents with LOB business data in Office 365. So to get full integration faster, then you probably want to stay on premises. 
Another thing to think about is how much does your business rely on SharePoint search? And this is pretty important. If your company uses search to find related documents through a business process, then on-premise may be a better solution. This depends on how fast you need to find these related documents. How fast your new documents are available in the search index depends on how often SharePoint crawls your documents. When using on-premise, you have full control of how often SharePoint crawls your documents to little as five minutes. However, in Office 365 or hybrid, you're limited to whatever Microsoft has the crawl interval set to. Typically, this is set to 15 minutes, but in some cases it can vary, possibly up to many hours. Of course, this is going to slow down any type of document processing you may have in place. So finally, if you look at the new features, what, am I, what might I be missing here? Microsoft continues to innovate all the time up in the cloud, and they have tons of new features that they move into Office 365 on a continuous basis. They do this on a monthly basis, uh, possibly quarterly. And they only make these features available online. These are features like Delve, Delve Analytics, Equibo eDiscovery, uh, e Records Management and Compliance. Most of these will always only be available online and never be pushed down to on-premise. So if you're looking to get the latest features from Microsoft up in the cloud for your documents, then you probably want to go with Office 365 up in the cloud or with a hybrid solution. So let's talk about what we learned here today. So if you look at all the different features of hybrid, on-prem, and uh, in the cloud, you probably need to really look at how you're using your documents, how much you're searching, and how fast you need to search documents. And you also want to look at how important all these new features that are coming out of Microsoft are to your business. So if, all, if, if the features, the new features are important to you, then you're better off doing a hybrid or an online solution. All right, thanks, Steve. Um, so we got one more poll for you, question for you guys before we uh, turn it over to Q&A. Uh, so the last question we have is, what is your organization's timeline for utilizing SharePoint Online? So I know that uh, quite a bit of you are already currently using it, so that'll be, uh, you'll be answering number one. Uh, but we also have less than one year, greater than one year, and, and you have no clear vision uh, for when you would like to utilize SharePoint Online. So we'd like to get your uh, thoughts on that. Let's go ahead and open the polls. And again, we'll give it about 60 seconds uh, to find out how the results are going to shake down. So as we expected, the, the results kind of align with uh, where you guys currently are today. <clears throat> we'll give everybody about uh, 15 more seconds to get their answers in. So we're seeing about a 30-70 split. I can give a couple more seconds for last-minute voters. All right. So it shows that uh, for we use SharePoint currently, we had 37% of the vote. 31% uh, of the people were saying that in the next year their organization would be tackling uh, a SharePoint online or hybrid uh, scenario. 10% said that it would be out past one year. And finally, 22% uh, of you have no clear timeline for migrating or uh, leveraging off, uh, SharePoint Online or Office 365. So thanks again, everybody, for voting. And now we're going to switch over and uh, do some Q&A. All right, so let's take a look at the questions here. So Stephen, we have a, a question here uh, from Steve. Uh, what is a common hybrid scenario using using SharePoint Online and SharePoint on-premise? Well, I think the most common one is um, using search uh, because you get a lot of mobile users who use OneDrive 
and they also want to access uh, on-prem documents, important corporate documents. So a lot of people will set up a cloud search service application to combine uh, the results. So the users can search both on-prem and uh, OneDrive documents in a, uh, in a unified uh, UI from Office 365. Okay. Uh, second question is from John. He says, what are the risks of not going with a hybrid or cloud solution? Uh, the risks, I, I think uh, some of the risks are if you've got a lot of mobile users or people using tablets or phones or whatever, they're going to have a more difficult time accessing their documents if you're not up in the cloud. And I think another uh, risk is, uh, like I said, on some of the new features, you're going to miss out on a lot of the new data loss protection uh, features, the compliances uh, features. Also, the Delve Analytics that seems to be a, a big driver right now. People are looking at uh, wanting to be able to collaborate better with Delve uh, and, and groups. And uh, that seems to be some of the things you probably would miss going, uh, just staying on-prem. Okay. So we have the questions flowing in. Uh, let's see. We have Ravi asks, what skill sets do I need to best support a hybrid solution? Okay, well, you got to look at, uh, with hybrid, it's not one of your traditional IT uh, um, skill sets. I think you need to be very good at Active Directory, uh, security, uh, be able to understand your user profiles, uh, because you have to set up a trust between your on-prem uh, farm and with uh, Office 365. So you have to understand certificates, SSL, Active Directory, um, understanding uh, PowerShell, and migrating user profiles or syncing them up between your uh, your on-prem farm and Office 365. All right, cool. All right, so we got more questions here, uh, and we're just going to keep answering until we run out of time. So we have a question from Don that says, "How does file size affect the optimal solution, or is this not a concern?" Well, I mean, file size can affect uh, your uh, optimal solution because if you have some very large documents, like say, like with CAD drawings, and you're going to store them up in uh, in the cloud, and they don't have a native viewer up in the cloud to view your CAD drawings, you're going to have to download that uh, document back down to your desktop, and it's going to have to load in whatever viewer that you're using. So file size, the larger the file size and the type of file is going to affect whether you, you want to go up in the cloud because the performance, if you open that document a lot, uh, you're probably going to get kind of frustrated having to download it from a remote data center versus something that's local. Okay. All right. We're going to take a couple more questions here. Um, let's see here. So there's a question about permissions. Is it fair to assume that the, oh, this is from Aaron or Aaron? Uh, is that is it fair to assume that permissions for a given user, both online and on premises, are identical, or do they have to be managed differently? Uh, the, it, the permissions should be the same because you're syncing up your Active Directory and user profiles between the two. So especially when you're doing search. The permissions, um, the ACLs, as they say, are going to be uh, uniform across the farm in Office 365. So I would go ahead and and say that they would they would be the the same. Okay, and we'll do one more question real quick. And this was a kind of a follow up on something you said in the in the session. So Joel asks, can you explain why you had PDFs as a reason not to use the cloud? Uh, it says PDFs are often considered in the same categories as Office files, et cetera, et cetera. So, right, and, and a lot of people get confused on that. And, and in the session, I talked about that some of them depends on what type of PDFs you're using. So, if you're doing um, document imaging with PDFs, so you have a lot of embedded images, there have been problems with the Office Web Apps uh, one uh, viewer that they use for uh, PDFs up in the cloud with embedded images. Most of the time, if you have only text-based uh, PDFs, you shouldn't have a problem. However, if 
you're doing document imaging, you could have a problem because their rendering of embedded images can be quirky at times. It's not consistent. Okay. Great. All right. Well, I'm going to uh, wrap it up then. Um, so, again, thanks everybody for joining us today and throughout the rest of the sessions. Uh, we hope we hope you enjoyed today's uh, content. Uh, Again, I want to thank you, Steve, for presenting today. And uh, again, uh, just to remind you guys, uh, you can follow him at SP Steve on Twitter. Um, and then a little bit more uh, wrap-up housekeeping. Just a reminder: next, the next webinar will be on Wednesday, April 20th, and is titled "Office 365 and SharePoint 2016: Better Together." And this will discuss how to properly save files and use metadata, and how that can enhance productivity and findability. So again, uh, from us to you guys, thanks so much for joining us. Uh, we hope to see you back in a couple weeks. Take care and have a great day.